Okay, so we're going to move along and start talking about birefringence. And before we talk about birefringence, I want to talk about just a basic refractive index. So if you recall, in vacuum, electromagnetic fields only interact with each other. So there's no material, right? So there's no refractive index. Things move at the speed of light. In a medium composed of atoms and, or molecules, the E and M fields introduce a time-varying response in the charged particles, such as the electrons orbiting the atom. Okay? And we've said before that the motion for these charged particles is highly elastic. It's not like a metal. We're talking about something that's transparent like glass. And because it's elastic, the energy is temporarily transferred to the particles in return. And this exchange takes time, and this basically slows light down in the material. And so again, the more charged particles per unit volume, or the more they can move in response to the electromagnetic fields of the photon, the slower the light travels in the medium. And so you can see materials that have high refractive indices are those often that have higher densities of the atoms because there's more electrons in there that can move in response to e and You'll see that general trend on the periodic table, for example. And, of course, we can calculate the speed of light according to the speed of light in vacuum divided by refractive index. And so if you look at refractive index, how do we calculate refractive index. Well, refractive index is calculated as the square root of the dielectric constant and the uh, of, well, permeability, permittivity and permeability. So dielectric constant and the magnetic version of that, which is permeability. And so we've talked about that before, but let's look at that from a material standpoint now. So let's specifically, when we start looking at this, look at how molecules orient in electric fields. So let's look at this case here. Let's look at long molecules, so I just kind of drew the molecule like this, and the red line is the electron cloud so that is, is, ab is orbiting around the molecule. Which way would the E field distort the electron cloud the most? Would it be this way or this way? Well, it turns out that the strongest interaction of E field with the molecule is when E field is aligned with the molecule, so E field in this way. Okay. And that's kind of the same way we had the strongest interaction with a polarizer, with the electrically conductive components of a polarizer as well, right? Well, if this gives us the highest response to E field, then it'll have the highest permittivity, which will give us the highest refractive index for E fields of photons that are aligned along the long molecules. So again, higher permittivity gives us higher refractive index. Now, a key thing to remember is that, you know, when we're doing this, you're just distorting the electron cloud. And so if you look at uh, books, they'll show that here's an unpolarized material with all these molecules or atoms inside of it, and then you apply an electric field to it, and you polarize it, and they kind of rotate. You're not actually rotating them. These diagrams make it look like they rotate. You're actually just, again, distorting the electron cloud. So here I apply an electric field the electrons move more in this direction because this is the positive side of E field. And if you look at how I would draw this, I now have more net charge here because the nucleus has positive charge. And so you see more of a net charge here, whereas you see more of a net negative charge here because there's more electron orbit over here. And so that's the same way as drawing it as rotating these little charges, but you're not actually rotating it. You're distort just distorting the electron cloud. And again, you can get the most distortion for E field aligned with the molecule, and therefore the highest refractive index. So therefore, could refractive index be dependent on the polarization of photons then, and how they hit the material? So let's take a look at that. So here's an example. Here and here, this is an example with calcite material. It is called birefringent. Let's try to figure out what's happening here. And so you can see in this diagram, I've got two polarizations of light coming into the material. And they are refracting at different angles here. And therefore, they exit the material at different angles. And that's exactly what's happening with this calcite crystal placed on top of some text. The light is refracting and emerging from the crystal at different directions. And so what this means is that the material is birefringent, meaning that these polarizations are seeing different refractive indices. Two different refractive indices, hence the term birefringent. Is the material amorphous or crystalline? Well, it's probably crystalline because it has some sort of order here 
in there, which in the arrangement of the atoms, which gives rise to one axis of the crystal giving one refractive index versus the other axis of the crystal giving a different refractive index. Now we're not interested in crystals, we're more interested in polymers, okay? And the reason is, is that's the more practical application you see in most optics where you have birefringence. And in fact, you don't even need a special polymer. Most stretched or extruded poly polymers, just like scotch tape, exhibit birefringence. Why is that? Well, what happens is polymers are long molecules, and the image below here is for liquid crystals, but it's also the same thing for uh, polymers as well, where these long molecules, if you were to stretch the material out in this direction, let's say you started with the material that all the molecules were all in any random direction, and then you started stretching it out, well, as you stretch it, the molecules are forced to order, and they become parallel. And so, when you make plastics this way by stretching, melting, and extruding them, the molecules line up, and therefore, photons with E-field this way would see a higher refractive index because they're aligned with it versus photons with E-field in this direction where it would not be aligned with the axis. So if I had E-field in or out of the plane here, that would have a low refractive index, so I'll call that N low, okay? And if I had E-field in this direction, then I would have a refractive index which would be higher, okay? And so you get two different refractive indices, hence birefringent material. Look at the example we started with today. This is the protractor. It was not stretched, but it was injected molded. So they made this by injecting hot plastic into a mold. And you can see here, with they used a polarizer and things like that, different wavelengths of light getting refracted at different levels and different different regions because of the way the molecules of the material were flown in to this mold and formed the material and they lined up. Okay, so it shows that beautifully here. So what does this have to do with the lecture today and what does it have to do with polarization? Well, consider a birefringent material that is thick enough such that it delays one of the two subcomponents of a polarized photon by 90 degrees compared to the other component. So let's say we had two photons. Here's the first, here's the second. And let's say they started out in phase, just like we had before. Remember when we had, um, we said we'll have this is one photon, this is the other, and together they form a single polarization for the resultant. But let's say it starts like that, and it goes through this material, such that the second one is delayed by 90 degrees compared to the first one. So this got delayed in phase by 90 degrees. What happens? Well, we know when we looked at this experiment that it goes from linear polarized light to circularly polarized light. This type of material, a birefringent material, is called a quarter wave plate. And what happens, again, is basically one of the polarizations, let's break this up into the resultant vectors instead, so we'll say it's coming in like this instead of this interpretation, okay? This one would see an axis through the material like this. This one would see an axis through the material like this. And the key point is that the refractive index seen on this axis would be different than this one. And you could make this just by making this plastic by stretching all the molecules in this direction, right, as you make the plastic. And as a result, you get this phase delay because the axis that has a higher refractive index will be delayed. It travels slower. Remember, speed of light travels lower in a higher refractive index medium. And therefore, if you make the thickness of this correct, you can get a 90 degree phase delay, phase delay, which is one quarter of 360 degrees. Hence, you call this a quarter wave plate. Hence, it turns linear polarized light into circularly polarized light. Now, let's take it one step further. Let's take two quarter wave plates and add them together to make a half wave plate. Now, that kind of makes sense. Two quarter waves together equals a half wave. 180 degrees. I'll show it on the next slide how this works. Well, if I take unpolarized light, here's a polarizer, make polarized light, put it through a quarter wave plate, as I explained on the previous slide, I'll get circularly polarized light, put a second quarter wave plate, I will get then linear polarized light, but it is now rotated 90 degrees with respect to the original polarized light coming in, and then it can make it outside this polarizer. So I'll explain how this works in a second, but what if we could make this 
electrically switchable. What if we could make a polymer of some sorts that we could switch and reorient the molecules electrically and therefore turn this on and off? Well, if you could do that, if you could make this disappear, then in that case, then in that case, this linear polarized light would try to go through this and it would be blocked. And when you make this reappear, it gets rotated in polarization and it could make it out. And so how you do that, and we'll talk about this when we do displays, is that you use not a liquid, you use not a polymer, but you use a liquid crystal, which is like a polymer and liquid phase, where you can orient the liquid molecules with electric field. We'll come to that more. But let's go back and try to understand how it went from this circular polarized to linear polarized. So it's an extension of the same thing we had talked about before. Here we are, polarized light, okay? And we can look at this in terms of two resultants that are moving like this, that are in phase, and if I take the resultant of this and this, it gives me a polarization here. If I take the resultant of this and this, it gives me polarization there. So the net polarization is linear polarized back and forth. Both, the result, both of the components are in phase. Now, we go through the first quarter wave plate, and one of these sees a refractive index that is higher and becomes delayed by 90 degrees. So I get a phase shift of 90 degrees, hence quarter wave plate. And at that point, remember when we did this exercise, if you look at this resultant and this one, and then you look at these over time, you end up with a circularly polarized wave. Then you go through another quarter wave plate, same, things ha same thing happens again. Polariza the phase difference gets shifted by not 90 degrees, but 180 degrees. So now it's been shifted to 180 degrees. Now you look at this and you say, well, they're out of phase, but not really. Look at the amplitudes. They both peak at the same time. So if I have amplitude here is a maximum, let's look at, we'll look here. For the red, I have a maximum positive here at 90 degrees. And this is a, so red would be up here. And then blue's maximum negative would be here. So maximum positive negative, it's here. Then they go to zero at the same time, they go to zero. This becomes a maximum negative, which would mean, I mean, blue becomes a maximum negative, which means it would be, um, I mean, sorry, blue becomes a maximum positive, which means it's here. Sorry about that. Red becomes a maximum negative, which is here. Looking at the way I looked at these over here on the xy plane, giving me a result in here. So you can see now, I've got the case again of linearly polarized light. This is an example of showing the same thing, essentially with a little bit different pictures from the Fundamentals of Photonics book, and using terms like quarter, they call it not quarter wave plates, but quarter wave retarder because it's slowing a portion of the wave, uh, polarization of the wave down, or a half wave retarder, which would be two quarter wave plates together, showing you how you can get from, you know, even things such as uh, switching the polarizations, but also switching circular polarization from one direction to the other direction as well. Okay, review and take a break, and at that point, we'll be down to the last part of this lecture.